want to thank our candidates for Washington State Supreme Court for making the trip over the mountains to visit with us today. We have Stan Roomba and Jim Johnson. Uh, hopefully you got a letter from me explaining the format, but if not, I'll just run over it really quick. You have three minutes for an opening statement. Then we're going to ask questions of you for 40, 45 minutes, and then you'll have two minutes for a closing statement. And I, it might be helpful for everyone just to go around and introduce themselves at this point. So we can start with you, Stan. Stan Rumbaugh. I'm from Tacoma, Washington, and I'm here as a candidate for the Washington State Supreme Court. I'm Justice Jim Johnson, and I'm on the Washington Supreme Court, and I live in Olympia, Washington. I'm Matt Taylor, and I'm a retired, but a member of the editorial board. Chris Savula, editorial page editor. Cecilia Rexis, editorial writer. Rufus Friday, publisher. Jack Briggs, retired publisher. Ken Robertson, executive editor. All right, thanks. And, and the way we'll go with the format is I'll, I'll uh, start with the challenger and go to the incumbent, and we'll do the same in, in the closing. So, Mr. Rumbaugh, you have the uh, first word, and, and Justice Johnson will have last words. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for inviting me out here to Kennewick today. Uh, the first obligation of any Supreme Court justice is to protect the individual rights and liberties of the citizens, and it doesn't matter whether those citizens live in Tacoma, where I'm from, or Kennewick, or Spokane, or out on the Kitsap Peninsula. Appreciate the opportunity to come around. I've been practicing law in Tacoma for over 30 years, and I've represented thousands of individuals from all walks of life, all ethnicities, uh, with all sorts of legal problems, great and small. Uh, I've represented these people at all levels of our court system, uh, the uh, trial court level or sometimes administrative hearings, on up through the Court of Appeals and through the Supreme Court of the State of Washington. It's been my privilege uh, in the course of representing these, uh, these citizens uh, from all walks of life uh, to be exposed to a variety of legal problems, um, from civil tort claims to some criminal matters, uh, uh, to issues of complicated trust in estate litigation, uh, equitable division of property at the time of death, uh, bad faith, uh, insurance, abusive uh, practices, claims, uh, and the whole gam gamut, uh, mostly now, of civil litigation. I've spent a lot of time in my community uh, working for various boards and on commissions uh, as a volunteer doing work that I believe is important to advance the interests of our community. And those would be uh, service on the Board of Trustees of Bates Technical College, providing job skills training to dis disabled folks, uh, job retention training for people that need new skills to continue working uh, in their industry. Uh, we have an alternative high school system, a Running Start program to keep at-risk kids in school and and finishing high school and learning how to do something that will make them employable when they're done. Um, I've served on boards related to my uh, profession and uh, related to a whole array of uh, nonprofit and, uh, and community uh, outreach. And I think this is important because the experience that I bring to the court, not only as a lifetime litigator, uh, but also as uh, a member of the community that understands what people believe their government should be doing for them. Uh, the judicial system, of course, is a part of the government. And understanding what the law's uh, intent, which is to serve the people, uh, should be. And, and to be able to discern the intent of the law is important uh, because you have to have consistent and reliable application of the law in order to adequately advise your clients or whatever group that you're with. So when you have judicial activists that take the law and put their particular uh, brand of uh, ideological spin on it, that uh, both undermines the three, <laughs> I, I guess that means I'm done, but, uh, yeah, we'll stop you but uh, thank you very much for inviting me. I look forward to answering your questions. Thank you. And so Mr. Johnson, please. I'm Justice Jim Johnson, and I came here six years ago, I think, talked to many of you here and talk to the community here, I made a promise that I would protect your constitutional rights and not legislate from the bench. I've done over 700 cases, participated in those opinions since I've been on the court. I've fulfilled that promise and I'm asking the citizens to re return me to the 
uh, Supreme Court of Washington. Uh, to flash back a moment, when I talked to you six years ago, I claimed wide experience. I had litigated almost 200 cases in trial courts, including 23 of the 39 counties of Washington. I had become the litigation appellate expert in the state of Washington for the Attorney General's office, litigating almost 100 appellate cases in the Eighth Circuit, Ninth Circuit, D.C., Federal Circuit, over 30 in our state Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals. And I was, and still am, the only uh, justice who had litigated and argued and won cases for the citizens of Washington in front of the United States Supreme Court. From that broad experience, in the six years in between, I've now written over 140 opinions uh, in our state Supreme Court, 80 of those majorities and concurrence in the majorities, and yes, 60 dissents. I thought when we spoke the last time I'd be doing more dissents, but uh, as it turns out, I've written a lot of majorities, and that, I repeat, there are about 700 cases that I've sat on arguments and participated in the decision making. These cases have ranged particularly through those that I promised. Washington's Supreme uh, Constitution has wonderful protections better than the federal Constitution. So I've written on free speech rights, invalidating as unconstitutional a statute that let a public agency decide what's uh, true speech and politics. I've written for religious rights, the Tent City case, uh, recognizing our absolute freedom of religion includes the right of churches to participate, in, particularly in these tent cities. I've written a lot of cases on private property rights. Uh, we'll probably be debating a little uh, one that I uh, wrote just in the last month involving gun rights, recognizing that not only the Seventh Amendment, but Washington's special constitutional protections extend and better to gun rights than does the federal constitution. I'm proudest of all, most of all of the cases I've written involving victim rights because the second attorney general, Ken Eikenberry, a friend still, was the uh, prime sponsor and the people of Washington adopted the victim's rights amendment to our constitution and few states have one. Born out of a, of a perception that the courts were protecting the constitutional rights of criminals and they should and we do but they'd for, many of the courts had forgotten victims. I have rejuvenated that and brought that as part of our jurisprudence today. Okay, well, during our questions and answers, we'll be uh, sure to have time to get to the issues that you didn't cover in your opening statement, so mm -hmm. we'll have plenty of time. Uh, my, my first question is for uh, Mr. Rumba. There's three uh, uh, seats open on the US, or the state Supreme Court uh, this year, and but you picked uh, um, Mr. Johnson to oppose, and I'm just wondering uh, why him? My friend and colleague Charlie Wiggins is running against Justice Standards for that seat, and uh, so that race was taken, I, I guess you would say. Um, Chief Justice Madsen uh, is running unopposed, which I really think is too bad because I think that every year, regardless of whether you're uh, an incumbent or somebody that's looking to, to run for the, for the uh, bench, or any political office, you, know, you need to give the voters a choice. And when I looked at the two remaining races, I felt that uh, running against uh, my opponent would give us a clear choice about uh, perspectives that are being brought to the court. I believe that my perspective is more centrist. Uh, it reflects what I believe to be the mainstream values that we have in Tacoma and here and around the state. I've never worked for the government. I never cashed a government paycheck. Uh, I have built my own business over the last 30 years and faced those same challenges that every small business owner faces, uh, making payroll, providing health care benefits to your employees, making sure your business has business <laughs> and keeps running. And I, I'm very sensitive to those issues and, and the way that the government uh, can assist and the way it's not very helpful. Uh, and I believe that based on the diversity of clientele that, and, and issues that I have dealt with and do deal with every day in my practice, uh, I would provide a more centrist uh, choice for the voters uh, than my opponent, who I believe has spent most of his life uh, working with the government and for large corporations, uh, um, the Building Industry Associates of Washington, Tim Iman, uh, the, the Grange, Farm Bureau, and it's just a different perspective, and, and that's the choice that we present. 